So you just started to learn Django to build your dream website and you want to come up with a website that will include a navigation bar with home, about and some more wide options that will allow your users to access different pages. So let's say that we build a to-do list website. Your pages will be home and about and maybe a tasks page that will display the task that you have to do. So this means in this website you will have at least 3 HTML templates that will include the same code snippet about the navigation bar and the sidebar because you don't want to give up using those HTML snippets in order to display them in each of the pages. But that is considered as a bad practice in Django because it leads to a lot of duplicated HTML code which becomes very hard to maintain. So a good way to solve this in Django is by using Django template inheritance. You could create one HTML that will already include the navigation bar and the sidebar, let's name this base.html, and all of your three templates could basically inherit the content of the base.html and that way you don't have to copy and paste over and over again the navigation bars in your templates and that is good because in that case the file base.html becomes a parent html template that other html templates could inherit from and in that case the home about and tasks.html are considered as child templates that are inheriting from the base.html and this way we follow the concepts of dry don't repeat yourself when you write programs and it just becomes much easier to maintain your project in that way So in this video I will show a perfect implementation of template inheritance in a project that was already prepared by myself. So it is up to your decision if you want to follow along and just implement this on your projects or just listening and understanding how this could be implemented which is going to be extremely helpful for you in the future. Okay, so that will be the GitHub repository that I will use here. You can find this in the description and in here I'm going to just click here and copy the link of it and in my working directory I'm going to say git clone and I will just paste this in. Now this is a project that is called Django for everyone so I will clean my screen here in the terminal and I will go ahead and say cd Django for everyone and you can see in the github page that there is a directory called base app so I'm going to cd here and I will execute my application. And once it is running, then I can go ahead and run it and you can see how it looks like. Now, this already has the template inheritance implemented, as you can see some navigation bar and the sidebar. And let's understand what is written in the template side. Okay, so here's our project. Let's understand some important areas to see how template inheritance works. Now, as we know, in Django, we have the options to include a lot of URL patterns that should be written in this syntax in order to allow different URLs that could be accessed by users. So we will show some information in different pages. You can see in this line, we have a URL that is responsible to return some web information in the home URL and it redirects to views.homepage. Now, if I go and inspect inside this function, you can see that this is just a template view function that renders a template in a location that is seem to be in main forward slash home.html. So main forward slash home.html is exactly this file. And this also happened to be the file that we show in the beginning of this tutorial, which is happened to be that one. You can see how beautiful it is, but it only includes one line of HTML code because it inherits the entire template from a file that is called base.html which you can see from here in the project. Now if we take a look in the base.html here then you can see that it is divided into head and body sections here in the html area. Now I will allow myself to ignore this load static basically this is just a Jinja function that imports all the static files so they could be used in the html file itself and that is only what it does but this is not the main topic of the video so i will allow myself to jump into this head tag here and go over what is happening here 
Okay, so in the head tag, we have some meta information like in most of the HTML files. So we will minimize this back. And in the body tag, we have some interesting information to really understand what this parent template includes. Now in the body tag, you can see that if we take a look here in the line 20, there is another Jinja function that does something very special. It includes everything from this file. Now this is just equivalent to the import option of Python. Basically, once you go ahead and include some another HTML file, you basically just include all the content of the HTML that is inside this file. And this file is actually a file inside our project for sure. So if we go here to the includes and to the top dash navbar.html file, you can see that all this file has it is just a nav tag that includes a bunch of information about what we want to have inside the navigation bar, which totally makes sense because we already saw the navigation bar in the home page. And now the same happens with the sidebar file. You can see here we have one more file. So we also include all the code from the sidebar and that's why you see the almost dark gray color sidebar in our page. And so you can see, for example, if we go and take a look here, this is another navigation bar tag. And this one includes just a lot of tags that each one of them are responsible to show options in the navigation bar. So for example, we have li class nav item, which is closed here. So this is just one option in the options section that is coming from here. So what that means, it means that if we minimize that and minimize this and minimize that. And let's try to add one more option here to see something cool working. So I will use the same HTML code in order to include some, just one more option. And I will paste that right here. Now, this means that if we copied a minimized element, then it means that it should paste everything, right? So you can see that this is totally what happens here. And I will only allow myself to call this option for just to see that we are going to have something working. Now, since this is inside the sidebar, which is used inside our parent template, which home.html inherits from, then it means that we are going to see this in the home.html, right? So on the left side, we have the base.html, and on the right side, we have the child template, which inherits the entire template of base.html. So that means that if I go to my page here, and for now we have three options, but if we refresh this out and we click here to see the rest of the options, you can see that option four is being added. So that is the beauty behind template inheritance. If I was to not have template inheritance, then this would mean that I had to go over all my templates and add this option four, so to speak. So that is a perfect job here that is done in how template inheritance should be implemented in your projects. Okay, so let's see some more cool stuff here in this project in the base.html file. Now you can see that there is one more minimized tag here that is just a div tag with some content in it. And if I open this up, then you can see that it has some section tag which includes just more information about our page, which at the end of the day, this entire code is responsible to show this Thing here which is just a card that is closable with this button here which is quite nice now I also want to go over some more important stuff that we should be aware of now we can understand that since the child element in inherits from the base.html template with the extends function that's the function that allows inheritance then this means that Everything that I will include in the base.html should be automatically reflected in the child template, in the home.html, right? So for example, I'm looking here in this h1 html tag. This means that if I go here in line 33 and I add some text like this is a big text, then this is going to show up in the child element, right? Because we inherit from the base.html. So if I go here, then you can see that this is exactly the result. This is a big text is something that I see here. Now, here is the real reason, the real beauty behind the template inheritance here. If we go to our project, you can see that there is a new Jinja function that we never saw before, which is block, right? So if we delete this, because it was a temporary example, 
you can see now we have a Jinja function that is called block. This function allows to open up a placeholder that could be replaced in your child elements. So what that means? It means that once you use the block function, then this means that this section is a section that is allowed to override in the child element as much as you want. And that is why we see the default page title text in the home.html. But let's see how we could override this section here. So we said that this is a section that could be overridden in the child element. Let's see how we can do that. So by basically using the block function, we mark an area that could be overridden. So if I go here in the home.html and I say that I like to override this section that is called page title because block is the function name and page title is sort of the name of the area that is opened to be overrided. So I can say that I'd like to override this. Make sure that you use the same name. So block page title and I will close my area by saying in block. Now inside here, whatever we will include will be overridden. So default page title used to be the information that we saw here. But if we go ahead to our project and we say here, this is our homepage, then this should be replaced because now we replace the page title with this information, meaning with this text here. So if we go to our homepage and we refresh our website, then you can see that this is the only result that we see because default page title is disappeared and we only see this is our homepage. And that is one of the things that are really beautiful in template inheritance. If I was to now delete the entire section that is overriding the page title section, again, we will see the default option which is just a random text that I came up with here. So deleting that will reflect the page to be in that way. So that is one more great reason that you want to consider using template inheritance. Okay, so now let's try to implement an example of this by our own. So in the body section, we will try to find a good area to add some more valuable HTML information. So if we go to the body tag, then one of the important tags here is called div class content wrapper. Content wrapper is an area that is responsible to show everything in the white area because that's the content of our page. And so that's why it could be a great idea to go right here, for example, in line number 77, that here we will add some more valuable information. So this is the latest line right before this div tag is closed. So here we will add some new information. For example, we could add one more div tag that its class will be equal to a row. So we are just adding a new row to our application. And let's try to just create a random secondary title here, something like that. We will use h2 tags and I will name it. This is our secondary title for base template, right? And I will just use something like that. Okay, so now that we have something like this, then I can go to my page and refresh it out. And you can see that we see this here. Now I know that this was not aligned perfectly in our page, but talking about styling and CSS best practices right now will take too much time. So let's focus on our task to implement something in template inheritance. So you can see that we see this text here that is saying here, this is our secondary title for base template. Now, what we do not like here is the fact that we see base template. It could have been great if we could override this base keyword, for example. So what we could do in our project is going to this base and wrap this text being a text that could be overridden. So I'm going to do that, right? I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to jump a couple of lines to just use the block implementation. So again, if we use a code like the following, this will still be responsible to the same page. Jumping different lines inside div tags does not reflect too much difference, right? So that's okay. And now what I can do is I can start a new block that could be overridden and I can go ahead and name this something like that. Block secondary title, right? And every block area should 
followed up by end block once we want to finish the area that could be overridden, right? So this should be right here. So I will go ahead and say end block right here. But if we do not use this block in the home.html, then it should take the default option, which is base. So yet we should see the same result if we refresh the page. But if we go to our home.html and we say block secondary underscore title, make sure that you don't misspell this because otherwise it won't work. And then you come up with end block then you can replace this with any text that you'd like to that will be placed besides that. So I will go ahead and say here home, just a simple text, and then you can see the change, right? I can also go ahead and make this bigger now. Let's say that I want to use only h1 tags for this home text. So this means that I can go here and I can just do that, right? I can wrap this with the h1 tags, and now we will see the home a bit bigger, which is not nice, obviously, but there is the option to include more HTML tags in block areas. And that's something that I wanted to show here, which is important for other functionalities that you may want to implement. So again, this is the perfect result. Now, in addition, we could go ahead and create one more child template. So let's go ahead and do that quickly. So in our URLs, I will allow myself to add here one more URL, right? I will go ahead and say that we'd like to have an about page and this will be named about underscore page function. Obviously, this is a function that we have to create. I also replace this one and going to our wheels page, we could pretty much allow ourselves to copy the exact same wheel here just for the purposes of this tutorial, only changing the function name to about page. and as well as the template name to about.html. And now that we have done this, then it also means that we need to create this template. So going to our main directory, creating a new HTML template here will make a lot of sense. And now that we have a template like this, then we could use the magic line that is responsible to inherit everything from the base.html. So it will be the extends function, and that should be followed up by the parent template name which is called base.html, like that, right? And now that we have done this, again, going to our website, and we can go here, change this to about, you can see that I see the same results, but you can see that for the text here, I see base. And obviously we can do the same trick by using just the same, code snippet like that, right? Block secondary title, replacing home with about, and we should be good to go here. Perfect result and perfect simulation of how template inheritance should be done. Okay, so I hope you learned something new in this video. Please let me know if you enjoyed in this one and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Hit the like button if you enjoyed in here and consider subscribing to my channel and I will see you in the next Django tutorial.